Oh, he's the well that never runs dry. Thank you, Lord. And he's your source, my source. Thanks, guys. Y'all can be seated. Are you glad to be in church uh, this morning? Well, uh, as has already been mentioned, let's stir up for our week of increase. It'll be Monday through Friday, 7 o'clock in the evening. If you're watching by internet and you hadn't made plans to go, to be here with us, check your heart. Uh, if you're supposed to be here, uh, you want to do what the Lord prompts you to do, right? Be here. Get yourself here in a chair. And uh, let's believe God. And uh, how many think the Lord could say something to you that would just open up a whole realm of things to you? Just uh, answer questions, put problems behind you, get things settled, get things fixed, bring you to another place. And not just visit a place, but just move there and live on a different level. Somebody say, so be it. Well, if you didn't bring a Bible with you, uh, Raise your hand real high. The ushers have Bibles. We'd be glad to let you use one of ours. And let's all turn to Romans 1 and Luke 4. Romans 1 and Luke 4. We've been on a series for some weeks now entitled Good News for the Poor. Good News for the Poor. Is there any good news for the poor? There is. In uh, Romans, the first chapter, and the 15th verse, Romans 1, 15, it says, uh, the Spirit of God through Paul, he said, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. He's ready to do what? Preach, preach means to proclaim, announce, tell the gospel. Verse 16, he said, For I am not ashamed of what? The gospel. the gospel. For it, the gospel, is the power of God. Said out loud, the gospel is the, gospel is the, power, of the power of God. Something important to, to um, what's the word, um, identify here is he didn't say the gospel tells about the power. Did he? The gospel is the power. Say it out loud. The gospel is the power of God. He said the power of God unto salvation or the power of God to save. What is the power of God to save? The gospel. There's much more there than we've seen. The, the gospel is uh, literally means the good message, the good news. Uh, you see it also worded like this, the good news of good things. The good message about good things. And that good message, not a good message, the good message of the good things about what Jesus, who he is, and what he is, what he's done, what he's going to do, that is the power of God that saves. Hmm? Thank you, Lord. And he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Now, why would he say I'm not ashamed of the gospel unless he had been tempted or pressured to be ashamed? If you were never tempted or pressured to be ashamed, there'd be no need to say, I'm not ashamed of it. You can tell he's resisting something, isn't he? He's, he's standing and not yielding and not giving in to something that would try to pressure him into backing off, into being embarrassed about or ashamed of the gospel. But the, the greater one in him is strengthening him and he's rising up and saying it loud and bold and saying, I am not ashamed of this good news message. And with everything that's in me, I'm ready to preach it to you, he said. <laughs> Why don't you say it out loud? I am not ashamed of the gospel. Hallelujah. Not ashamed. Look in Luke 
the fourth chapter, please. Luke chapter 4. Jesus said in verse 18, Luke 4, 18, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? Preach. Jesus is talking now. He's saying, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. Jesus said, I'm anointed to preach the gospel to the poor. What is good news to the poor? If you read the rest of the passage, you see the contrast. Some have read this, and in their mind at least, to them it reads, the good news to the poor, they're thinking is that you can be saved. But no, that's good news to the lost. Read through the rest of the passage. He sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He's not talking about the new birth. He, if you're brokenhearted, what is it you need? Healing. And to preach deliverance to the captives. If you're in captivity, you need to be delivered. And recovering of sight to the blind. If you're blind, you need to be able to see. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. If you're bruised by shackles and chains and bondage, you need to be liberated. You need to be set free. Can you see the, the answer is the opposite of what the problem is? Huh? And, and he said, I'm anointed. The anointing is on me to proclaim to the broken healing, to the captive freedom, to the blind sight, to the poor it would have to be the opposite. Can you see this? Of being poor. Now, some have, uh, you know, I've had people try to shame me for decades about preaching prosperity, so-called, and preaching healing. I've had people write me letters and said, you know, uh, we don't preach all that healing and prosperity stuff like you do. We just preach the gospel. And they really feel like that, you know, that I'm off and people like me and that they are preaching and what they're talking about is the new birth. But you know, we studied this in Acts 14 a few weeks ago. We saw that Paul preached the gospel in a place and the Bible said, uh, among others, one man heard it and got faith to be healed from hearing what the Bible calls the gospel. And in a lot of these places, people would get faith to be born again from hearing what they call the gospel, but they'd never get faith to be healed from hearing what they call the gospel because they don't believe that's part of it. But apparently if we preach the very same gospel Paul preached, people would not only get faith to be born again, they would also get faith to be healed, reckon they could get faith for something else too. Yes. And in Jesus' ministry, there's no question, there were many, many, many healings and miracles, but were there any financial miracles? Yes. Certainly there were. There were the feeding of the multitudes yes. on more than one occasion. People got their taxes paid out of a fish's mouth. I mean, they're amazing things. Well, apparently that's part of the story too. That's part of the gospel too. Thank God there's good news to the lost. You can be saved. There's good news to the sick. You can be healed. And there is still good news to the poor. You can be rich. Rich. It's not an ugly word. It's a Bible word. Did you know it's a Bible word? Rich. I had a fellow meet me in the parking lot one time. I thought he was going to take a swing at me. He was so mad, he was fit to be tied. You know what he was mad about? It took me a while to get down to it, but I kept saying, when I was preaching, I kept saying rich. And that word just infuriated him. Well, he's not the only one it infuriated. It infuriates the devil that Christians might actually have enough resources to accomplish the Great Commission. Come on, are you listening? That infuriates the devil. If he can keep us broke enough 
and sick enough, he can keep us from doing what we were made to do and called to do. But I want you to know, just like the first covenant people, he brought them forth with silver and with gold, and there was not one feeble person among their tribes. And today, he'll bring you out healed, forgiven, money, ready to go, and you can get up and go and do something in this world for Jesus. If you believe it, say amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Go with me, if you would, to the book of uh, John. I want us to look at some things we've looked at before. And if you haven't been with us now, we've already covered a lot of ground. And it would help you to hear what's gone before. And so uh, if you're in the building, you can go out to the uh, Word Supply and get a DVD, get a CD. If you're, or you can go home and get on your computer, get a, go to the website, download it all the previous messages in their entirety won't cost you a thing either way. And of course, no cost, no price means no excuse for not getting it and not having it. So take advantage of this and, uh, and get caught up with us. But we, we looked at this in some detail, but I believe we need to look at another side of this. In John, the uh, actually look at the 12th chapter. The 12th chapter. And the... Uh, third verse. It says, Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard very costly. Was it expensive? Yes. No. It was very. <laughs> it wasn't just expensive. <laughs> when the Bible said it was very expensive, it's very expensive. Very expensive and anointed the feet of Jesus. And then wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor or the, the aroma of the ointment. <clears throat> now apparently this happened more than once. Because we see back over in Luke 7 about a woman in another place that did the same thing. Luke seven thirty seven. 37. Uh, Jesus said at food in the Pharisee's house, Pharisee's house. And this woman that everybody knew was a sinner woman. She brought a box and in verse 38, she stood at his feet behind him and weeping, began to wash his feet with tears and did wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with ointment. And then on, uh, if you look in uh, Matthew's account and Luke's account, uh, Mark's account talking about the same situation. They talk about uh, where his head was anointed with this oil. And we've already got, gone into detail about this. Go back to, to John and verse 4. When she did this on this occasion, one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Now, if you read these stories, you'll find that it immediately... After this story connected to it, it said Judas went to the priest and asked them, how much will you give me? And I will betray him to you. The story of the offering of the precious ointment is tied together with the story of Judas' betrayal. They're, they're one and the same. They're tied together. And Judas, verse 5, he said, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence? Now, it depends on the value of uh, a dollar. It depends on the value or the, the, the wage of a, a day laborer. But it, you're in the neighborhood of $30,000, somewhere around in there. This could have been sold for $30,000 and given to the poor. Now, you know, this is, this is quoted by people all over the place in a positive way. People say, isn't that something? How much they spent on that building? That could have been given, that could have helped the poor. Isn't that something? How much they spent on that house or that car or, or how much they spent it on that TV bill? That could, been, that could help the poor. You know how many people that could feed? And don't, don't have enough understanding to realize they are quoting Judas. Yeah, that's right. Come on. 
Now, do you want to be like Judas? No. Or Jesus? Jesus. You want to think like Judas? No. And quote Judas? No. Do you understand? Millions of Christians are quoting Judas and don't even realize it and think it's a good thing. Because they're acting like, well, you know, oh, I hate that. That's just... That's terrible. I mean, they don't need all that. They didn't have to spend all that. They could be helping. They could be feeding people. That's a Judas quote. Isn't it? <laughs> Say it out loud. I don't want to. Think like Judas. Talk like Judas. Be like Judas. If you're serious about that, then you won't let yourself think or talk that way. That's right. Again. Amen. Now, Jesus responded to this. Keep reading. The Bible said, Ju Judas said that, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had to bag and bear what was put therein. He loves the money. That's right. The reason he's so upset is because the money, it wasn't liquidated and the money wound up in the bag where he could get to it. Right. But instead of being honest about his covetousness, he pretends to care about the poor. Yeah, God. This is ugly, isn't it? it is. And verse seven, Jesus said what? Let her alone. If you look at the other accounts, it says, she has done a beautiful thing for me. She has done an excellent thing to me. Leave her alone. Other translations said, the poor, you have all other accounts, I should say, Matthew's account, Mark's account. Other, uh, he said, the poor you have with you always and anytime you will, you can do something for them. Yep. But me, you have not always. Now this would have been the perfect place for Jesus to make this crystal clear from now on if he had said, woman, haven't I taught y'all better than this? <laughs> haven't I taught you? You just wasted $30,000. Do you know how many meals that could have provided? It would have been the perfect place. Wouldn't it? Yes. For him to make it crystal clear to every preacher and every person from then on, never receive any luxury items that could have been given to the poor. He could have set a precedent. Yes, he could. And he did. But not that one. <laughs> the precedent he set was leave her alone. She has done a good thing. In fact, he went further. He stirred up about this. In fact, he said, everywhere the gospel is preached, what this woman has done is going to be told. He made it a permanent attachment to the gospel, which is the power of God that saves. This is significant. You read the other accounts, you'll see that not just Judas felt like this. The other disciples followed suit with Judas. They all jumped on the bandwagon and shook their heads and scoffed and tried to shame the woman. And actually they're accusing Jesus too. They're accusing the woman of being wasteful and they're accusing Jesus and the woman of not caring enough or doing enough for the poor. They all jumped on board with it. And the premise is this, that everybody knows that it's more important to do something for people in need than to give a luxury item to a preacher. Everybody should know that. And the implication is because the poor 
are more important than preachers. <laughs> I know it's politically incorrect. But we're going to boldly <laughs> deal with it. Is it more important to do something for the poor? Are the poor more important than preachers? Which is more important? The problem or the answer? Hmm? Food and clothing or the gospel? <laughs> Go to uh, <laughs> Romans, please. The 10th chapter. <laughs> like I said, first service I, I heard when I said that, I heard, moo. <laughs> <laughs> we just run smack dab into a holy cow. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited because for, for decades, some of these things have bothered me and I couldn't quite put my finger on why they did. I knew a little bit about it, but I'm getting some answers. And things are getting clear. And some of, some of it we can get into right now today. Are you believing with me? Will you accept the truth? The truth makes you free. Do you want to be like Judas? No. Or Jesus? Jesus? Which one you want to think like? Jesus. Jesus. Let's stop thinking like Judas. Let's stop quoting him and thinking it's holy. And thinking it's godly. When it's absolutely contradictory to what the master said. In uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, and let's look uh, about verse 13. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? What's the answer? They won't. You're not going to act on a belief you don't have. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Uh, how does faith come? Verse 17, it's just a couple of verses later here. You, uh, back up then to verse, uh, what is it, 14? You can't believe what you haven't heard. Can you? You can't. And how shall they hear without a preacher? <laughs> I know it sounds a little self-service, serving maybe me standing up here preaching and talking about it. But I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about all the preachers that have ever ministered to my life and all the other ones that have ever preached to you. We need our preachers. They are gifts. To us yes. from God. The Bible said when he ascended on high, he gave gifts to men. Amen. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, yes. preachers. Yes. And I know the devil hates us. Yes. And unsaved and ungodly people think that if all the preachers on the planet was wiped off, it'd be a better place immediately. Wrong. But they're wrong. Yes. The fact is, they are in desperate need. Yes. Of one of us. Yes. Hmm? Not just a man, not just a woman, but someone that God could use to get this glorious gospel, which is the power of God, to them. And God has chosen that men and women be saved by what the world counts foolishness of preaching. Keep reading. Verse 14, 
How will they call on him in whom they've not believed? They won't. How will they believe in him in whom they've not heard? They can't. How will they hear without a preacher? They can't. Now let me stop right here. I had a person ask me back years ago. Uh, I was first year at Bible school and a person was going to another place, a seminary, and he asked me because we had been a part of a project that had gotten a lot of Brother Hagin's books and tapes into a place where they had not heard it before. And he asked me kind of sarcastically why we didn't spend that money on Bibles instead of these uh, teaching and preaching tapes. And I really didn't know what to tell him. <laughs> Until the Lord brought this to me. It didn't say how will they hear without a Bible. Didn't say so then faith cometh by the Bible. It comes by what? Hearing, hearing and, and, and verse 17, hearing by the word of the Christ, if you look it up. It says the word of God, but if you look it up, word of the Christ, Christ means anointed. Yes, everybody needs a Bible, but you also need a preacher. Hmm? And he went on to say, verse 15, how shall they preach except what? Just because you decide you're going to preach the word don't mean you can. Like one fellow said, some are sent and some just went. <laughs> and just because you got a degree in theology, just because you call yourself doctor this or that, don't mean you got an ounce of anointing to preach right. or teach. Study is great, but if you're not called and you're not sent and you're not anointed to proclaim it, then people are not going to get faith when they hear it. They could get condemned, they could get confused, they could get in bondage, but they won't get faith. <laughs> oh, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the anointed. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And you can't lay hold unless you believe it. You can't believe it unless you've heard it. You can't hear it unless somebody's been anointed to preach That's it to right. you. Yes. Right. And they can't preach it unless they've been called and sent. Because yes. right. it all comes back to the Lord, right? So when it happens, we got to all throw up our hands and say, well, it was the Lord. That's right. That is right. Because I couldn't have preached it. You couldn't have heard it. None of us could have believed it. Unless Jesus did it, did it there would have been nothing to preach about. Amen. Right? It begins in him and ends in him. But we get used. Verse 15, how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel, good news, of peace, and bring glad tidings. That's the very definition of the gospel. Glad tidings of good things. How beautiful are the feet. Did you notice what a, more than one occasion that broke that ointment on his feet? Washing his feet with their tears, drying his feet with their hair. Why? Those feet were beautiful to them. Hallelujah. Because those feet brought the man that brought the message that changed their life. Come on, are you listening now? Lazarus was cold and dead in that tomb just a few days before. Now he's sitting up here at the table. His sister's sitting up there with him. He's laughing, having fun. Jesus is at the table. He's saying, glory to God, pass the biscuits. <laughs> And she, do you think she's thankful for this word and the word made flesh that God brought into their lives and the most precious thing she's got is in her bedroom on her dresser. She runs in there, she gets it, pop. She blows it all. It wasn't just expensive, it was very expensive. 
and it didn't feed anybody. It didn't clothe anybody. It didn't house anybody. All it did is he smelled wonderful for a few hours. And then it's all gone. And, the, and Jesus' own staff, his own disciples begin to holler, Oh, what a waste. What a waste. What? They're saying, wasted on Jesus. Friend, this ugly stuff is holding back the body of Christ from their provision, from actually being able to do for the poor. It is a lie. It is a deception. Jesus said, the poor you have with you always. And anytime you will, you can do. You don't have to have a word from heaven. You don't have to have an angelic visitation to do something for the poor. Anytime you want to, help yourself. But me, he said, you don't always have. And she has done a beautiful thing for me. She's honored the word. And if it hadn't been as expensive, it wouldn't have made the same statement. That's right. That's right. Would it? Mm -mm. And you've got Christians all over the place. They believe stuff that's not in the Bible. They believe stuff that's totally contrary to what Jesus said. They believe, well, you know, I've, uh, I've had it pretty good in life. And you know, I, I feel like I just owe it to give back. And then people that are in need have the same mentality. Well, yeah, these rich people owe us. Why would you? Why does somebody that has more owe you anything? Why? Why? And if you feel like you should do something for somebody, how much is enough to where you can say, okay, I can enjoy some stuff without feeling guilty? How much? 20%, 30%, 50, 85, what? This is all messed up. It's all twisted. It's just religious junk. Doing something for somebody in need is an excellent thing. It's what love does. It's great. It's good. But it's not the Great Commission. And it's not the most important thing we're assigned to do. And helping somebody is not the solution. Notice in Luke 4.18. Put it back on the screen for us, please. Well, before, before we do that, Matthew, uh, excuse me, excuse me, Mark 16.15. Put that on the screen. Mark 16, 15. Jesus said, do what? Go into all the world and feed people. Hmm? No. Feeding people is wonderful, but it's not the Great Commission. Go into all the world and, and build houses and clothe people. It's wonderful to do those things, but it is not the Great Commission. Now Jesus in, in Luke 4.18, what did he say? He said, the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he's anointed me to give to the poor. No. Hmm? No. To help the poor. No, no to what? The There's something more important that the poor need, the sick need, everybody needs more than a meal or clothes. They need salvation. And the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Are you with me, friends? And see, what so many are trying to do is reduce the church from the glorious body of Christ, gospel preaching machine that is supposed to be to a humanitarian organization. And the devil don't care how much you preach about helping people or saving the planet or any of this as long as you don't talk about Jesus and the blood and the gospel. And so many have gotten off track and they're emphasizing things other than the gospel. 
I heard a moo while ago. Just just then. Moo. What was that? Let's, let's go ahead and run it over. Let's don't leave it in its misery. Let's let's run this dude over. Back up and run over. Make sure. <laughs> the Great Commission is not save the planet. The earth is not our mother. Genesis said Eve is our mama. Eve, not earth, Eve is the mother of all living and God created her. No. Tell me what the gospel is, or excuse me, tell me what the great commission, the great commission to the church, what, it, what should be the, our main emphasis? Go into all the world and do what? Preach. Preach. Well, we're going to need preachers for that. Hmm? And books and TV and internet and churches and meeting places and sound systems. Come on, are you listening to me? We're going to need stuff to do that. And while it's wonderful to help people in need, it's not as important as the gospel. That's right. That's right. The definition of poor, if you look it up in Hebrew and Greek and other places, it basically means depressed or down. Of course, it means in want and in lack. But the, the, if you look at the, the, all the body of scriptures on it, it has to do with being down and dependent. In want, in lack, down, dependent. And the word rich means full and not dependent. Independent of people. The psalmist said, I, I've been young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. I've never seen their seed begging bread. He said, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in men. Yes. This is something all of us need to watch. I have erred in this area myself in my thinking. You know, let's let's get enough faith, let's get enough anointing, and let's go get everybody healed. Heal everybody. Minister to them, whether they want it or not. <laughs> let's, let's believe God and sow enough seed and get enough money and just take care of everybody's needs and take care of everybody's bills, pay everybody's stuff off. Well, if you did, if you were able to, you'd be the provider. That's right. That's right. If you could, you'd be the healer. You'd be the provider. And you're not. And you won't. And if somebody's in need and the Lord gives you ability to help them, feed them, clothe them, help them pay their bills, that is only a temporary fix. Isn't it? It's temporary. Because they're going to need something next week. Right? And next month. And they don't just need to subsist or survive. And as long, no matter what kind of programs we come up with, and no matter what kind of stuff we're able to do, as long as they're dependent on us, they are not rich. They're still poor because they're still dependent. And God said, you have been delivered, you've been redeemed, don't be the servants of men. And that is one of the most glorious things about the gospel. It's not just that he's made provision for you, he has set you completely free from being dependent on anybody. Any man 
man, any woman for your forgiveness, for your salvation, for your healing, to pay your bills. People say, well, give a man a fish and you fed him for a day. Teach him to fish and you fed him for a lifetime. There's something better than that. I said, there's something better than that. Tell him the gospel about how Jesus has made him joint heir with him of the creator of fish. <laughs> the source of fish and he will not only eat well the rest of his life, he will become a channel to meet other people's needs and it'll be a completely reversed situation. Instead of him being the one in need, being dependent, he's now somebody God's using to meet other people's needs. That's right. Is there any better news the no. poor could ever hear? No. The good news is not the church or wealthy people in the church are going to take care of you. Hallelujah. And certainly it's not the government's going to take care of you. Because <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't true at all. They can't take care of themselves. <laughs> You, you do pray for them once in a while, don't you? <laughs> no. There, there can never be a good enough program to take care of everybody's needs. Because even if you could send checks enough to everybody to cause them to eat, they're still poor. Because they're still dependent. On some, come on, can you see this? Because they're still dependent on somebody else. Yes. I was just shouting, praising God the other day, coming home. Thinking, glory to God. We're soon going to open this church. I believe people's going to run in there and fill it up. <laughs> and we didn't ask the government. We didn't ask any denomination. Come on, you listen to me. We didn't go begging anybody for money. Come on, you listen. We are free. We are free. We're free to go, free to do, free to preach anything the Lord puts on your heart. Free. Somebody say free. How could you get that kind of free? The power of salvation, of that kind of freedom is in the gospel. Hallelujah. That's what it is. Yes. And yes, when people are hungry, they need something to eat. And when they're naked, they need something to wear. But more than that, they need to hear this word. Yes. They need to believe and get, the, get as their father the source of everything in the universe. Yes. And you talk about not being poor anymore. Being completely free from dependency on man. God's working something in this church. I said he's working something in this church. I'm believing people are right. Didn't he say he's getting us to the best shape of our lives? That's what this is about. Another way of saying, saying that is he's getting you free from dependency. Depending on this, depending on that little check, depending on that little job. Somebody needs to say amen. D -d depending on this little, depending on these people, depending on mama and them, depending on my brother and sister that always bails me out, depending on this, depending on the church. No, you need to get your eyes up higher, my friend. Get your eyes up off of rich people. Get your eyes up on the God. Hallelujah. The God who invented rich. He came up with rich. The God of abundance. It just makes you so free because then you get rid of all the politics and all the flattery and all the junk of trying to rub shoulders with the right people and maybe they'll like you and maybe they'll finance your project and, and maybe they'll do this. And oh, blah. Amen. <laughs> No. no, 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 you don't have to crawl, you don't have to beg, you don't have to plead, you don't have to come with your hat and your hand to anybody, you serve the God 
God of the universe who created the heavens and the earth. And though you were a sinner and undone and failed miserably and were unfit to be in his presence, Jesus came. Jesus came and took your place and paid the price and paid the penalty so you could be a son of the most high God. That's the good news. I said, that's the good news. And it is the power unto salvation. And it makes you free, 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 free. Free in D. Woo. You stirred up at all? <laughs> Go to Galatians. Somebody say, free, free, free. He's made me free. What is the good news to the poor? You've been made free. You've been set free. Free from lack. Free from need. Galatians 5. Free from dependency on man. I've been redeemed. Redeemed from bondage. Redeemed from reliance on other men and women. You know, we're talking about the word supply and our word senders. It's the way the Lord's allowed us to do things for these several years now. It's just so wonderful. We go into meetings. We go into churches. We pay all our expenses. We pay everything getting there. We bring uh, tens of thousands of dollars worth of materials and sow them Hallelujah. or more. And they sow an offering to us. It's all giving. Yes. No charging. We gave it all to them and asked for nothing. They decided they wanted to sow something to us. So there's no, can you see, there's not this dependent, well, you've got to pay our this, and you've got to take care of this, and you've got to take care of that. No, if God's as big as we say he is, why do we have to pull on them? Why do we have to hand them a bill and insist they pay it? Well, yeah, but you're a preacher, Brother Keith. You're supposed to do that. Ah. You're, you're supposed to operate by different rules in your business. Boy, it got too quiet right there. You feel that? Oh. We didn't graze another one, did we? We didn't hit that one. We just kind of grazed him a little bit. No, the question is, should you live by faith too? Absolutely. Hmm? Yes, yes. Should you live by faith? If you live by faith, say it out loud, faith, faith. puts no pressure, puts no pressure. On, people. on people. Hallelujah. Ever. Faith puts no well you got to do this. You you got to let me. You got No, they don't. They may never. Well, they said they would. So people lie, you hadn't heard? <laughs> It happens. <laughs> well, if they don't do that, I can never have, or we won't be able to. If you believe it, you're stuck. That's where you are. But when you believe the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, it makes you free. I said it makes you free. And after the Lord's done it several hundred times in your life, you just smile and go, hey, that's okay. It'll come from somewhere else. It will come. And we will have it. Amen. We won't just have enough. We'll have more than enough. We'll, we'll have abundance. Praise the Lord. Amen. And not have a clue where it might come and how it might come. But you know him. Galatians 5, do you see this? Verse 1. What did he say? What did he say? Stand fast. In the liberty, somebody say liberty, liberty. In the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. One translation says it is for freedom that he made us free. Why do he make you free? So you could be free. So you would not be dependent and in servitude and in bondage. Anybody that is in tough circumstances, 
If God uses somebody to help you, thank God for it. Thank God for them. But you ought not be content to need that kind of help all the time. Hmm? I don't care where you are or what it's been. You need to be, be able to look up. I don't care if it's from the lowest gutter. Look up and say, God's bigger than this. I do not have to live like this. I do not have to live dependent on anybody else. God will get me out. He'll give me my own. He will establish me. He'll give me my own place, my own occupation, my own house, my own stuff, my own money. Hmm? And there will be many, there are many that would try to make us ashamed for preaching something like that. And without saying it, what they are implying is that, well, you know, God has allowed that some be wealthy and have means, but others, it's just, we don't know why, but that's not their lot in life. And, and God has not chosen. I mean, they're saying God has ordained them, had them born to poverty and ordained that they be broken, poverty stricken, and dependent on men for their survival for their lifetime. No way, no how. No. No. You've, you have been redeemed. You have been bought with a price. Don't be the servants of men. I've seen it. I've seen, you know, people will tell us, well, now you go over in these certain, these certain countries that are, uh, you know, so poor and this and that. You know, don't, don't preach that prosperity thing over there, you know. You need, they need it more than anybody. I've seen and we've gotten testimonies of people that were selling grass house to house for mats. And now they have an import-export business. <laughs> they went from walking to a bicycle. They went from a thatch hut to a tin roof. And brother, in some places, that, that's, that's reaching up, man. Tin roof. And then they got a car. Nobody around there had a car. And, and now they got their own business. Yes. Do you believe that any man, any woman, anywhere, I don't care who you are, gender, race, background, education, life makes no difference. Right. Do you believe any man or woman anywhere reach up and call on God yes. and say, I believe in you, Lord. I believe what you've done for me and I believe you will raise me up out of here. Didn't the psalmist say he raises up the poor out of the garbage pile and sets them with princes? It says so. It says so. What did Jesus say? He said, it's the thief that comes to steal and to kill and destroy. I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. The Amplified said, to the full until it overflows. Can you tell just, just today, preaching for a few minutes, can you tell we've bumped up against some things a couple of times? That junk has suppressed and held down the body of Christ for centuries. And the truth will make you free. We, I, I desire, and I'm believing for myself, and I'm believing for you, I'm believing for this church, that we get rid of every vestige of this ugly Judas mentality, hypocrisy, judging, poverty-stricken, lie-believing junk. And I believe that the Lord, he's already working it in us, bringing us into the best shape of our lives. But I've already seen some places where we're going in this series, and it's a good place. Uh, he's getting us to the place where we could do more for the poor than we ever thought about being able to do. And that's not even the main thing we're doing. The main thing we're doing is preaching this gospel all over the world. So you can give you can give people money. You can put clothes on their back, put them in a house. That still doesn't make them rich. There are a lot of poor people with money. They got money. They count it every day. Scared to spend any of it. Won't use the good china. <laughs> Did you know what I'm saying? They're 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 still poor in their soul and in their mind. They're poor people with money. But the gospel, 
will make you rich on the inside and on the out. He gives us richly all things to enjoy. And the Bible says when God gives a man or a woman all these things and gives them the power to enjoy it. It is the gift of God. The, world, the unsaved world ought to look at us and, and ask the, the question, can they really be having that much fun? <laughs> <laughs> are they really enjoying life that much? Because they've been told that to be a Christian, you got to be miserable. <laughs> and you can't have anything. And you can't enjoy anything. It's lies. So can you see all this is designed to keep people away from God, away from the gospel? Because the truth is, it's the goodness of the Lord that leads men and women to repentance. Seeing how good he is. Where are they going to see how good he is? They're supposed to see it in you. They're supposed to see it on your life, in your house, with your kids, with your stuff. And not just that you have a few things. You are rich inside. You're rich in your mind. You're rich in your soul. You're rich in your relationship with God and with your family and your friends and your church. Rich. Somebody say, rich, 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 rich. Say, I'm rich, I'm rich. He's made me rich. He's made me rich. Stand on your feet, everybody. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Master. Oh, hallelujah, just lift up your hands. Let's praise him, let's thank him. Because he has set us free. Oh, just by faith, no matter what you've been experiencing, thank him for setting you totally free from bondage of every kind, lack, dependency on man. Oh, Lord, I pray that this word, not just what I've said, but what you said, what you said through me, that it would reverberate throughout the minds and hearts of us all, all day today, all night tonight, all through tomorrow and all through the week until it dawns on us in increasing power. We are the redeemed and we have been delivered from dependency on man. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it out loud. Close your eyes. Pray it out loud. Father God, Father God help, me to see help me to see and be free, and be free from, all from all wrong thinking, all Judas mentality, all Judas mentality. ungodly, ungodly. tradition, unscriptural beliefs. Help me to see it and get rid of it and be free from it. And I thank you that you have made me rich in you. Rich in you. True riches in the living God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let's just praise him some. Lord, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. 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 Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This is going to continue to work. Let it work. Don't fight it. Don't fight it. Let it work in you. And identify it. Don't say, well, I don't know if I agree with what that preacher preached. Forget about me. Was it the Bible? Was it Scripture? Make sure you know what you're looking at. And would you submit to the Lord? Even if it was different than what you thought, would you yield to His Word? Would you yield to His will? If he wanted you blessed and increased, even if you didn't want any more stuff and ability, would you submit to him? Yes. Hmm. 
And let him increase you. Let him use you. Let him bless you. Thank you, Lord. We would have nothing if it hadn't been for Jesus. And we want to honor him in receiving communion today. It's only because of his blood. It's only because of his body that he gave. That There is a gospel to preach and to believe. And we want to honor that today. You got time to do that? Yes. Uh, ushers, would you come and get ready to serve the people? And you can be seated again. Keep your eyes open until you're served. And just sing with them.